Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to stabilize shaky footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now I believe that this is an effect that everyone that edits should know how to do mainly because it is a very common problem with videography is the handheld shaking effect. If you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and follow me on my social medias. My social media links will be in the description below, so go check that out. So yeah, I do plan to do more of like these tutorials on how to fix your footage and make your edits just a little bit better inside of DaVinci Resolve. I still will be showing you camera techniques and filmmaking techniques as well as post-production techniques as well. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. I will be making more camera tutorial so don't worry if you've subscribed and you're like hey what's going on why are you doing editing tutorials I do plan to show you how to do everything with filmmaking in terms of you know camera techniques and editing and pre-production and all of that sort of stuff so definitely subscribe for that so before you stabilize in post I strongly suggest using a uh, lens that have optical image stabilization or your camera has inbuilt body stabilization or you use a glide cam or a motorized gimbal like a Ronin M or a Zhiyun Crane. So it is best to do it inside of camera and I do understand that you know these tools can uh, fail on you so this is your next fail safe so I just want to instill that into you before I go on with this tutorial. Um, so yeah so with Danny here walking down the street you can see that it is shaking a fair bit there's micro jitters and then there's pretty large handheld jitters as well from just walking so yeah you can see it here so if you look closely you can see it's pretty blurry now so when I go back a frame blurry See how only the blurriness lasts for like a quick frame. Unfortunately, we are going to run into problems when we see this bit here where it's blurry for a frame and then it goes back to not being blurry. <laughs> um, we are going to have problems. So if you know you're going to be doing any handheld shots, I do suggest shooting at a higher shutter speed so then you avoid getting motion Oops. then you avoid getting motion blur inside of your camera which will help the effect look more natural when you stabilize it in editing so now let's get to the stabilizing which is what you guys are waiting for um, alright so we just go into the color tab here and you want to make sure that you're in the tracker window stabilizer should come up make sure you're in stabilizer mode see now we're in window Go into stabilizer. Um, so it's pretty simple to do. You can just click stabilize straight away and it'll automatically analyze your footage. And um, let's just let this analyze. So as you can see, it's cropped in a bit. When we play it back, we can see that it's, you know, stabilized pretty well actually. But um, unfortunately, that frame that was a blur, when we look at it, you can see the backgrounds. You can actually see the background distorting as we move. It's like a jello distortion sort of thing and that can be really distracting. I know when I watch a really cool video on YouTube and then I'm like, how did, how did they do that shot? And then all of a sudden you just see this like jello effect and it kind of takes you out of the moment. So if that doesn't work I do like to go down to perspective and choose similarity there is three options but my favorite two are perspective and similarity I don't really touch translation so I'm just gonna go into similarity as you can see there are no changes at all so to make the changes happen you wanna click stabilize again and it will reanalyze the clip with the new preset See now there's a slight adjustment. So if you didn't if you're not happy with perspective, you can just go into similarity. Uh, you can adjust the uh, the amount of smoothness. 
I'm at the bottom here, so I'm just going to bring it all the way to 1. So now it's like extremely smooth, but as you can tell, since we've got a lot of motion blur from the shot, you can see it. You can see the um, motion blur of the background and it kind of gives away that it's stabilized. So generally I'm pretty happy with this stabilization. So let's just look at, just uncheck the zoom. So let's just look at what is being stabilized. So you can see by the black bars on the corners here, um, how much it's stabilized. That's without it adding a crop. So you can tell where that big um, jolt was with the, um, where it was doing that jello effect. You can tell here because it tried to compensate for it with perspective. So I'm just gonna put zoom back on. So now it gets rid of those black bars. And so when you're shooting and you know you're going to be adding stabilization later, you definitely wanna um, zoom out a little bit just so you can um, compensate for that zoom crop factor. Now this one is like a perspective change, right? So you can tell that this changes, you know, it kind of goes and kind of disappears and then you've got the tree trunks and then you got the leaves coming in shot. I'm not too sure what that is actually. I think that's like a power box. Um, as you can tell, it's pretty shaky. So let's just, let's stabilize it. Let's go into perspective click stabilize and analyze so I'm just going to show you this is probably a better one for um, perspective so with perspective you can see here that there's this huge st um, like perspective shift you can see it's distorting the image we don't want this obviously because it's just gross and distracting so Let's fix this by changing it to similarity and stabilize. So when I, I find when you're orbiting around an object, you want to avoid using the perspective one because it's going to adjust the perspective as well and it's gonna throw off the stabilization. So for these sort of shots, similarity is the best one. Yeah. You can see a little bit of warping on it, but again, there's not too much you can do. Let's just bring up the smoothness a lot might be a bit too much but you know you guys get the idea I, I don't really adjust cropping ratio too much so yeah let's move on to the next clip this one this clip here I can tell by looking at um with this clip here I put on a little bit of optical stabilization which is in the lens that I was using so there is a bit more stabilization to it and i can tell you right now that there is a little bit of um uh, micro jitters in it but that's so much easier to smooth out than that first shot because there's no big jolting so i know for a fact when i stabilize this shot it's gone to pretty much work straight away and work really well so yeah i'm pretty happy with that but Let's just go similarity. There we go. We can add smoothness. Just add the smoothness to it. So now it looks like an actual dolly in sort of shot. There we go. It's nice and smooth now. Yeah. Okay. So when when you when you look at this, you can see that it's shaking a bit. There's the micro jitters. I'll just zoom in. There's no perspective change. It's just there in one spot. So, by default, you can just click in perspective. It doesn't really matter um, because there is no perspective change. So, you don't have to worry about it doing any sort of funny warp. So, yeah, it's nice and smooth now. There's no micro jitters. There is a bit of, let's just go into the corner here. There is a bit of handheld sort of movement. You can tell that the camera is moving. There wasn't too much going on. There's a little bit of, you know, cropping involved. As you can see here, so you can tell that there is a little bit of handheld movements. So let's just zoom that back in. So I'm pretty happy with this. 
shot. But let's say that you're at an event and you didn't have a tripod on you and you're out running around and you need to quickly get a shot because you notice something is happening right in front of you and you need to just get the shot quickly. Um, and you happen to get, you know, this shot where you're quickly getting it before, you know, you need to quickly whip out your camera and just capture a few seconds. So, you've stabilized it, but now you kind of want it to look like a tripod shot. You don't want any sort of movements happening, and you want it to make it look like it's been shot on a tripod. So, to do this, it's super simple to do. All you need to do is go to the bottom here and click camera lock, and then stabilize again. And now it zooms in a bit more. And now when you play it back, it looks like it's shot on a tripod. As you can see, the um, water in this like water fountain is moving, but it's relatively locked. There is a little bit of a perspective change because I'm just going to zoom in a fair bit here. So this is like the rock of the statue, and these are the trees in the background. So you can see that there is a little bit of a shift. If you enjoyed this video, please give this a like and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay notified for my next upload. And I will see you next time.